How's it going? You're gonna learn how to make a JavaScript game in a single file of Node, no dependencies in the terminal. Here we go. First step is we make an executable. Okay, we're in the game directory. There's nothing in here. Let's make the game and let's just set up the basic file here. So we're gonna start off with the shebang, user bin env node. That's gonna tell the operating system, run this with node. Just to make sure it's working, let's write console.log, I am working. If that works, it's working. Great, so if I run node, game. Okay, that's going to work, but I want to be able to run it like this and I can't. And it's going to tell me that it's not an executable file. We need to make an executable file. So uh, if I look real quick, I see R and W, I'm missing the X. X means executable, executable. So let's make it executable. Look at it again. It's now got the X. So now we can run it like this. Now that we have an executable, it's time to capture user input. We'll open up the game file. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to import process from node process. You don't actually have to do this, but this is gonna let my editor know a little bit more about what process is, and that'll help me out a lot. I can run process.standardout.write, and I can write something, I am out. Console log adds a new line, whereas process standard out write doesn't. So I'm going to generally use this right one unless I explicitly want that new line. How do I know console log puts a new line? Well, it'll tell you if you look, print standard out with a new line, but I'm supposed to be capturing input. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to import from read line. And I'm looking for a function called emit key press events. I can hover over it to learn a little bit more, but I'll just tell you right now, what it's gonna let me do is take input from standard in and then give me events like the events you would see in the browser with key presses. First, I have to set standard in into raw mode. And now I can wrap the events with this emit key press events. So it's gonna take a stream and the stream it's gonna take is process.standard in. So now we're gonna add a listener just like you would do in the browser. And I'm looking for what event here? I'm looking for key press and then I'm gonna give it a, a handler. And I actually only care about the second argument, which is the key. I'm gonna quickly give myself an, a way of getting out of here. So if, if the key.name equals Q, then I'm gonna do process.exit. I wanna do that, otherwise I have no way of exiting the application. Otherwise, for now, I'm just going to console log the key. Let's see what we have. So if I run this and I hit Q, it's gonna exit. If I run this and hit something other than Q, it's gonna tell me information here. If I hit shift and do these things, you can see now shift is true. All right, I actually want some game state, so let's do let state equals like that. And I'm gonna put player at X zero and Y at zero. So now we've got an imaginary player. I mean, they are just two points right now. Let's actually get some user input. So if uh, key.name is left, Okay, great. Uh, what do we want to do? So we want state.x to go down by one. Otherwise, if the key is right, we want state.x to go up by one. Let's log this out and see what happens. So if I hit right, you can see x is going up, and if I hit left, x is going down. And if I hit down and up, nothing happens because we haven't set up y yet. Okay, I've done the same thing for up and down. You can see it's working. Okay, so we're capturing user input left, right, up, down. Now we actually want to render the game state. So let's do it. I'll make a function called render and call it uh, as soon as somebody puts input in. Now, normally, if you were really going to do this, you'd probably pass the game state into render, make it a lot easier to test. This is just a simple game. I'm going to take standard out and I'm going to cursor to and I'm going to choose where I want it to go. So where do I want it to go? To state.x, state.y. Then once I'm there, again, process standard out dot write, and I'm gonna write. Now I need to choose what is my character actually going to look like. Let's make him look like an X for now. There, that's my character. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I hit right, and I start moving right, and I can move down, and I can move back up. But you can see that there's a trail behind me because we're never clearing the terminal. Let's start off by actually clearing the terminal here. Console.clear, very similar to JavaScript in the browser. 
But here it says when standard out is a TTY, console.clear will attempt to clear the TTY. Run it again. And now I've got this X moving around. The terminal's being cleared every single time. That's great. The cursor's there. I don't like that. We'll have to fix that. And also, when I quit the game, oof, I've kind of wrecked my screen. We'll have to fix that too. But we still actually have to finish the game state. So we have a little guy moving around, a little X. We also want a target. So let's have a target, uh, target X location. It's going to be nine. And uh, let's do target Y, also nine. And then we're going to do the same thing here. But we're going to draw our target. So we have X and then target X. For your game, I recommend better names. For my game, these names are great. And 7X will have a zero. That seems like a good thing. Okay, there's the zero. And now the X can slowly move around and get to that zero. Nothing happens. The curse is still there, but starting to feel like a game. So we made the executable. We're capturing user input. We're rendering game state. Now it's time to actually prepare this terminal so that the game looks well and behaves well in the terminal. Okay, I want to show you something real quick. So I'm here. If I do LL, 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 all right, and then I run Vim, and then I quit Vim, all this content is still here. But with our game, that wasn't the case. Our game just kind of like wrecks everything. And then when I quit, what have you done to my terminal? Looks terrible. So we're going to fix that right now. Okay, I've created a new function here called setup terminal. Inside of it, I'm doing the key press logic. I'm setting us to raw mode like we did previously. I also have two new lines here. So I am setting the terminal into an alternate screen. So when I do this in Vim and I go back, the reason that it's not all ruined because Vim took over my screen is because Vim's using an alternate screen. This is built into the terminal emulator. So you're using WesTerm, Alacrity, IETerm2, they all support that. But how is it setting it to an alternate screen? It's using ANSI escape sequences. Again, these are things that the terminal emulator is listening for because the person who kindly coded your terminal emulator knew about these things. These things go back decades and it sees this and says, okay, you've written that to the screen, but I know that this really means show me the alternate screen. Same thing for this one right here where we're hiding the cursor, right? It's so nice to be able to see the cursor most of the time, but in a game, you probably don't want it. So I'll get rid of all this at the top and I'm just gonna call set up terminal. We'll run that right away. And I'm actually just gonna move it below the state definition. Time for another function. Let's call this function game over. One word, two words, game over is one word today. So we're gonna have our ANSI escape sequences and then we are going to do process.exit and that'll clear the whole thing out. And now we want to use this game over wherever we used exit before. Let's go find that. Here we are. Now we're going to say game over instead. And I'll add a return. You don't need the return because we're exiting, but it just makes my brain happy to see it there. Game over is not a word. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's do game over. Is that better? Okay, game over. Okay, so I've got all this junk on my screen. Let's see what happens here. I play my game. I hit Q and I'm back. I've got my cursor. So now our game's not wrecking the terminal, which is very nice to the user. It's time to actually add a little bit of game logic. Okay, let's open up this game one more time. We're gonna jump in and we're gonna have one more function here. I'm gonna put it above render. It doesn't really matter where it goes, but I'm gonna put it here for now. And I'm gonna call this game or this function update. Okay, and then update is going to do some stuff and then call render. And then I'm gonna remove render from the input. I'm gonna put update there. For now, the game logic is going to be very simple. If the player has hit the target, the game is over. You can probably figure that out on your own, right? So if state.x triple equals state.targetx, okay, and state.y triple equals state.targety, what should happen? Game over. Let's try it out. Here we are. Game is not over yet. Oh, game is over. There's one more piece of game logic that I want here. I want to make this game extremely challenging. So I want that target to be moving. Basically what I'm making now is the game loop, right? So I need some kind of behavior happening in the background so that my game state can update even if I don't put in any input, right? So what should happen every 1000? So that's 1000 milliseconds, right? That's one second. What should happen every second? Every second I want move target. So the target's gonna move every one second. All right, we're just gonna have the target move randomly so it can move either up or down, left or right. And it's gonna do that every single time. So I'm gonna say if math, let's spell that right, math.random, 
uh, is greater than 0.5, what should happen? Then I'm going to say uh, x is going to, or sorry, state dot target x is going to be minus minus. Otherwise, state dot target dot x is going to be plus plus. So this thing is now going to move left and right. And then after moving target, we of course want to update because there's a chance that the target ran right into the player and the player has won the game. Let's see what happens. Look at that. Look at that thing down there. It's moving. It's moving left and right. Look, so challenging now. We probably want it to move up and down too. So we'll just duplicate all this logic, put it right here, and then uh, we'll use a Y. This game is now insanely challenging. Look at that thing. It's, it's dodging. It's deking. Is there any... I got it. I did it. We've come a long way. We made an executable. We captured user input. We're rendering the game state. We prepared the terminal. We even have game logic. Now a few finishing touches. What I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to switch over to another game I made. Exactly the same. No NPM, nothing. It's just Node, but a little bit more. So I called the game Pumpkin Node because it's a Halloween theme game. That's the most clever thing I could come up with. I'm sure there's something better. I don't know what it is. It starts off, it has a little screen here because in my game state, I'm checking to see has the game started. If not, we're going to render this. Otherwise, we'll start the game. And look, I've got colors. I've got a little guy walking around and I've got jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins. And if I go touch a pumpkin, nice pumpkin. Did you hear that? I hopefully you can hear that. I've got a little announcer or that guy saying something. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. And there's game yeah. state and there's levels. It's extremely, extremely detailed, amazing game. A few things that are different from the game that we looked at before. I've got different colors. Take a look at the source code. It's just ANSI escape sequences telling the terminal, hey, change to purple or hey, change to yellow. Another big difference is that instead of X's and O's, I have a, a person walking around and I've got some pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns. And those are just characters that I've thrown into the game and I've got those from nerd fonts. So if you go to nerd font and your terminal sports nerd fonts, then you can choose any icon you want and put that in your game. Okay, now I have to be honest with you. I lied to you a little bit. So at the start, I said, we're gonna teach you how to make a game in Node and uh, no NPM, no package JSON, right? Just Node and it's in the terminal. We did that, that's true. What I also taught you was how to make a terminal application. So if you look here, I have file viewer. So I've made this terminal file viewer in five minutes, it's terrible. So just take a look at this file viewer, right? I can press down and I can get a preview of these different files. If it's a Directory, it'll just say directory. Otherwise, it'll show me the first few characters uh, of the file, right? I built this in five minutes. It's not good. I wouldn't use it, but hopefully that demystifies terminal file viewers a little bit for you. The code looks almost identical to the game, right? So I have some state. I just have the index of the file that I'm looking at, and then I read the files in. They're just text. I've got a render function, right? Which every time somebody moves the cursor, I just re-render, and uh, I have this code here. Push Q to quit. How do you think that works? Can you figure out how that would work? It's the exact same thing. We've got it from before, right? Press Q. I also have if, if C and Control C, so you can actually do SIGINT and get out. But it's just a game. It's the same thing as a game. So my game pumpkin node or my file viewer, they work the same way. All your more complicated programs are also going to work the same way, right? So when I open up Vim, alternate terminal, right? It's taking in actions now. It's not written in Node, but same idea. Thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, step seven, please help me. The easiest way to support this channel, help me find Waldo, okay? I've been looking at this thing for like, I don't know, weeks now, and I know he's around here somewhere, but if I could just figure out where he is, then I could get back to 